Alhamdulillah, I've been in business for seven years and I've generated millions of dollars. I've made tons of mistakes, wasted a lot of time and done a ton of learning through probably hundreds of books, courses, interviews, podcasts and all of that. But what if I was taken back in time with all my knowledge but nothing else with me? What would I do to waste less time and get straight to the good stuff? Which by the way is completely possible even if you're just starting with nothing but an internet connection. I'm gonna take you step by step through every different angle of the equation that I would take to get success. The business I'd choose, the mindset I'd have, and even the place I would live and how I would go about balancing with the job. Let's get started, bismillah. Okay, let's start with the most important thing, which is mindset. And you've got to trust me with this because I've trained hundreds of people on business and marketing and consistently the biggest challenge is their mindset. And what I mean by mindset is the conversation that you have in your head. You have to control this. For example, people talk themselves into believing that this won't work. They worry about problems that are 10 steps ahead of where they are right now. And they constantly say to themselves, I can't do it. I've never done this before. I don't have experience. All of these messages are playing on repeat in their head. And it's not that they don't succeed because they're not good enough at the skills needed. It's usually that they either give up or they don't put enough effort in the first place because they have that fear of failure. This 100% will kill you off if you don't fix it. And that's why I'm starting with it at the beginning. And of course, we're going to go into the exact tactics of what business to choose and how to go about it. But this is something that you cannot succeed without fixing first. So what I would do for mindset, firstly, is I would make the intention. I would say, Ya Allah, I am starting this business for your sake. I'm doing this so I can get married, so I can provide, so I can spend in your path so I can have more free time to worship you and fulfill my purpose in life, to provide for my kids, to provide for my wider family, to go on Umrah, to go on Hajj, all for your sake. I'm doing a lot of these things for your sake. Of course, I'm gonna spend on my life expenses as well, but all of these reasons are reasons I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it because I'm Muslim. I'm inspired to start a business to get those things I just mentioned out of it. So yeah, Allah, I'm doing these things for you because I'm Muslim, because I submit to you, I'm doing it. So yeah, Allah, help me towards that. And make this a business that actually leads to those ends and not a business for the sake of a business. Because we all know that businesses can take you in different directions and we want a business with barakah in it that actually takes us to a better place in the akhirah and in the dunya, of course. The second thing I'll do mindset wise is I would have a good expectation of Allah, that Allah will give me success in this and have no doubt about that. And if he doesn't happen to give me success from what I can see, I would know that wasn't good for me in the first place. So I would firmly have a belief that Allah will give me success in this as long as it's good for me. And from what I can see, it is good for me to start this for so many reasons that you probably already know. So I would expect success from Allah in this journey. It might take me two years. It might take me one year. It might take a lot of hard work, but I expect that Allah will eventually give me success. And along the way, as long as I'm on the path, as long as I'm striving, Allah is rewarding me constantly because I had that good intention that we set initially. And because I'm in motion, I'm actually working, I'm actually putting in work, I can expect that Allah will open up my path business-wise. Or if not, Allah might open other paths for me because I'm putting in that effort. You know, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Allah says in the Quran, those that strive in our way, we will no doubt guide them. Now, of course, this guidance is primarily towards the akhirah and towards doing good deeds. But this path we're trying to take in business is a good path as well. It has so much benefits and we have the good intention. And the third big thing I would do mindset wise is to have an investment mindset. What does this mean? What I mean is if you buy a property for 500K today, you don't expect that tomorrow you're going to make money in the next day and the next day after that and the day after that. No, you're expecting that you're investing today and maybe in two years time, you're going to get your big payoff of 700K, for example. So you're spending today for a big down payment or the whole amount upfront, and you're going to be paying off the rest over time. You're going to be paying for the maintenance, the taxes, the this and that. But you do that with the belief that eventually, maybe in a few years even, it's all going to pay off when you sell it for that profit. So if I'm working on my business and I ever question the results that I'm getting, I would always pull myself aside and say, look, you're in the investment stage. Have an investment mindset. You're putting in the work today and the benefit of that is delayed, but it will pay off. Because listen, these skills that you're going to learn in this business journey, no matter if you do a job later, a business later, a different industry later, whatever it is, they're going to pay off. I'm talking about copywriting. I'm talking about understanding finances. I'm talking about sales skills. I'm talking about understanding the market and market and customer research. All of these things will help you in so many parts of your life.
These are timeless skills that if you invest in today, you will reap the rewards in the future, inshallah, no doubt. Okay, that's the mindset part. And like I said, that is 80% of your success in business is mindset. But I know you want the juicy tactics. Let's get into what exact business or business model would I go into? Well, this is a very good question and it is the right question to ask, but it depends what outcome you're looking for. Some people, they've already made a few million dollars and now they're looking for their big company that they're gonna start and then they're gonna delay getting profit for a few years until they eventually sell it for a hundred million, right? But I think you and I, we're not in that situation. We're trying to get our first business to success and we're trying to make five, 10, 20, 30 K a month. So for that person with that criteria and what they're looking to achieve, I would recommend the following. I'd look for a business that doesn't need to have many employees. It's purely online. It's high profit. I can quite easily hire people to do the work as I get busier. And of course, the service is in big demand. Now, there are only a few types of businesses that fit all of these criteria, but the one I would go for if I was starting from scratch is a B2B marketing service business. What does that mean? B2B means I'm going to be selling to businesses. I'm not going to be selling to average people. I'm be selling to business owners specifically. Number two, marketing service just means that I'm going to do part of their business for them. They're going to outsource their marketing in this case to me. So for example, you might take on the sales training for a company where you manage their sales team. You might do Facebook ads for a business. You might do some AI help you with chat GPT automation or whatever type of business. The point is you're helping businesses with their marketing or sales and you're doing it for them as a service. So they don't have to think about it and do it themselves. This fulfills all the criteria that I just mentioned. And it's the easiest thing to sell because you're doing it for them rather than convincing them that you can show them or teach them how to do it themselves. It's much easier to sell. I will do it all for you. I'll take it fully off your plate because a lot of business owners, they don't have time and they would really appreciate that. Not to mention, of course, the fact that you can charge businesses a lot more, a lot easier than if you're selling to average people. Now the question comes up, which service specifically would I sell? And I wouldn't decide based on trends, based on what I like or what I know. I would actually pick first the type of business that I want to sell to. I would look for the type of business that are pretty established. They're selling something for at least a few hundred dollars and they probably have some sort of sales or marketing pain point. And then I would research them deeply. I would interview them if I could. I would go to the forums where they spend time. I would Google all about their business and see the pain points or the problems that they are complaining about, that they're looking for solutions for. And then I would look at those who are already doing that, already solving that problem. And I would learn about how to do it myself. I would pick a service to offer based on the biggest problems that this customer is facing, not based on what I know, what I have access to. I would base it purely on the demand on the size of the problem it is to them. And because of course we're helping them with their marketing or sales, we're helping them to make more money. I think the lowest I would charge for a monthly ongoing fee would be like a thousand dollars. And maybe for the first client or two, I'd go a bit cheaper. I would put it as a thousand dollars, but I would discount it. And I would say, look, I'm doing it for $500 because you agreed to give me a really good testimonial after we work together or something like that. I would even write it in the invoice. I would say a thousand dollars and then I would put testimonial discount and I'll put $500 discount for that. And then I'll say the total is $500 that you need to pay me. I really do think when we're working with businesses and we're doing the work for them that we have to get them to pay something because a lot of the time they will not prioritize you and your service and getting a great result together as a team unless they've actually skin in the game and they've actually paid you. And because I'm starting from scratch and I've kind of got nothing to lose, I might even offer them a crazy guarantee just to get my first few clients something like if we don't make you this much money, then I'll actually send all your money back, like some sort of guarantee like that. So they are still paying me, but I've got a crazy guarantee just to reduce the risk for them so I can get my foot in the door. Because a lot of the time, all it takes is one, two, three testimonials with really good results for you to go on and then get clients again and again and again. And now think about the type of business we're setting up here. If we're charging just $1,000, which is on the lower side, then if we have five clients, we're making $5,000 a month. And every time you get a new client, you're adding $1,000 a month to the revenue of that business. Now, imagine if you do a really good job and you start working with bigger clients and you start charging $3,000, $4,000. Imagine the type of money you can make from just a small number of clients. Now, who would actually deliver this service? I would actually prefer to deliver it myself. 
I would go and learn everything there is to know about solving this problem that the customer has. And I would buy a really good course on how to deliver this service, especially if the customer has already paid me, I would take that money and I'd use it to buy a course and I would follow the course to get results for the customer. Otherwise, if there are a load of tutorials on YouTube, I would actually just learn for free from YouTube and I would do my best. If I was feeling a bit unconfident, a bit scared, a bit worried, I might take some of that money that the client has paid me and hire someone to do it in front of me and then get them to show me exactly what they are doing so I can learn from them and I won't need them in the future. I think it's really important to understand the service itself so that in the future I can do it myself or if I hire someone to do it, I can actually manage them and know exactly what they're doing and the details behind it. So now I'm starting from scratch. I've fixed my mindset, I've got that right. I've picked my business model, I'm working on that, I'm getting clients inshallah. The third thing that I need to think of is where will I live and how will I manage my time with a job without a job, etc. Well, especially if I was unmarried, I would definitely get a job. I feel like a job is just a free way for me to learn. And remember, we're in the investment mindset. So we're investing time by going to a job and we are working, but we're learning. We're learning how to interact with different types of people, how to navigate politics and conversations and relationships with people that we might not be too comfortable with, or we might not choose to spend time with in our social time, but we're forced here to deal with these difficult situations. You know, when I got my first proper job in an office, I went back to the books that I had read, all those personal development books, relationship books. I went back to that to learn how to adapt and how to deal with people in the best, most efficient way. So we can do that now. This is learning in practice and getting paid for it. Now, even better than any job would be a job in sales or marketing. So I'm learning even more in a more specialized area that I really value and I'm getting paid for it. So ideally I would get a job and then I would work on my business after hours. After my job, I would go and maybe take a nap and then I would work at least one, two, three hours every day after that. And then of course, money-wise, assuming I'm living with my family maybe, I'll be stacking a lot of cash because it's cheaper to live with your family when everyone's pooling the money together. Or I might go on my own and live in a Muslim country where it's cheaper, where I'm living amongst Muslims, I'm going to the masjid and that would be in the case where I can get a remote job. So if I could get a remote job, I'm getting paid and I'm able to live in the Muslim world with less distractions, that would be a really good bonus, but either way would work. I personally did a bit of both, but most of my business was built while living in the Muslim world actually. But either way, the key is to live in a low maintenance lifestyle and not be in a desperate situation where you just need any clients who will give you just $10, you just take them on. No, we need to learn to be a bit confident. We need to pick the right clients that we're going to be able to work with to get great results, to get great testimonials, to get great success stories so we can expand our business that way. So that is what I would do if I was starting from zero and I had all the knowledge I had now and I would keep doing that until I'm making five to 10K a month consistently for at least three months, then I would leave my job and I would go all in on it. But of course, in this video, there are some details that I couldn't quite fit in. So if you want to hear all the lessons from my whole seven year business journey, then watch this video next where you can learn all those details and see how I started from zero in real life.